Let us start uh, the module number 12, lecture number 5. In this uh, lecture, uh, we will continue the discussion on uh, in-process gauging and uh, control. So in this lecture, we will uh, discuss about inline uh, probing and then we will move on to the various uh, benefits of in-process uh, gauging and then we will uh, move to the next uh, topic that is uh, stage position metrology in which we will be discussing about uh, various uh, uh, precision uh, stage positions or table positioning systems. So what are the various kinds of uh, stages or uh, tables uh, available and what are the driving systems used in uh, these uh, tables and then uh, what are the errors associated with uh, these uh, stages and then how we can calibrate the stages and finally we will uh, discuss about uh, the various applications and uh, how we can select the micro or uh, nano stages. Now let us uh, discuss about the uh, inline uh, probing. Uh, the main objective of uh, inline uh, probing is to get uh, probing routines into the cutting uh, cycle. This is not uh, exactly the uh, gauging during the machining. So what we will do uh, in between uh, the different uh, operations, we stop the machining and we bring the stylus into position to check whether uh, the whether a particular feature is within the limits or not. If it is within the limit, then we uh, allow the next operation uh, to be continued. So we'll just take a very simple uh, example. So we have a work piece. So wherein uh, we have two operations. First operation is uh, drilling operation. Now that we have carried out uh, the drilling operation, uh, before we move to the next uh, operation that is uh, rimming operation, the first operation is uh, a drilling operation followed by a rimming uh, operation. So after completing the drilling uh, operation, we remove the drill from this uh, position and then we allow, a, we bring a probe which is similar to CMM probe into this position which will uh, check whether uh, the diameter of the hole is within the limits or not. If the diameter is uh, within the limits then uh, the next operation that is reaming operation uh, is uh, allowed. So in uh, inline probing what we have to do is first uh, the inspection program should be built into the main uh, CNC program. For that uh, uh, we have to import uh, the CAD uh, model then uh, the programmer has to pick what are the various uh, features uh, to measure the features like uh, the diameter or the depth of the hole or uh, the pitch circle diameter like that. Uh, so the programmer will pick uh, the various uh, features and he will drag and drop them into the inspection uh, program. Then uh, running an inspection program uh, generates measurement data that can then be used to automatically update uh, offset. That means the probe is uh, brought into the position and the feature is uh, checked. If the feature, for example, the diameter is within the limits, then no change is uh, made. If the diameter is uh, not as per the specification, then the feedback is given to the CNC controller to make uh, changes in the offset so that uh, the uh, work pieces uh, can be produced to the, uh, to the specification. So this can be done automatically or uh, the feedback is given to the operator so that he will manually make uh, uh, changes in the ACNC program. Verifies. The precise dimensional uh, relationships between uh, features at each step of operation can be performed to avoid rework or uh, scrap. 
Now high precision uh, uh, machine tool uh, probes uh, are uh, available uh, which op offer submicron or uh, CMM like precision to inline uh, part inspection. The strain gauge uh, based uh, designs uh, deliver uh, low trigger uh, force and uniform 3D trigger pattern with uh, 0.5 micrometer repeatability with a 50 millimeter uh, stylus. Inline uh, probing uh, are used for very complex and high value parts so that uh, the rejection is uh, almost uh, nullified. Now in this picture you can see a probe which is inspecting uh, the hole in the IC engine uh, body. Now let us uh, move to the discussion on uh, benefits of uh, in-process uh, gauging. The in-process gauging uh, can uh, tell how well the machine tool is uh, performing before actually uh, the cutting the work pieces. That means uh, we have to use the probing uh, tool uh, to probe the master uh, part. Uh, a program uh, Inspection program touches off a series of uh, points on the master workpiece. A deviation in the machine measurement from the control dimensions uh, determines uh, the need uh, for uh, offset. The inline uh, gauging can be used when parts are to be made to the specifications. It can also reduce trips to a metrology lab that not only takes time, but can mean an error inducing the re-setup. Now there are uh, real-time uh, benefits of real-time uh, gauging, uh, which, uh, which allows control and uh, optimization of the following uh, cycle. Part control at uh, start of the machining, that means uh, uh, check the in process gauging checks for correct part loading or excessive machining allowance uh, to prevent uh, collisions uh, of the probe with the work part. It can uh, define the amount of machining allowance to increase uh, machine uh, productivity. And then uh, part control during the machining, grinding wheel feed and uh, speed changes when the preset uh, machining uh, allowance values are reached, consequently reducing the machining uh, times uh, and hence uh, increasing the productivity. A management of uh, super finishing time relative to the actual uh, part value to improve the surface of the part. Management of uh, removal value to optimize grinding wheel speed and to control uh, form uh, errors. So proper uh, form can be provided to the workpiece by usage of uh, in-process uh, gauging uh, systems. Then uh, cycle stop at the nominal uh, part uh, dimension increasing the process quality and automatically compensating grinding wheel uh, wear. An inbuilt post-processor system allows uh, evaluation of the machine capacity and uh, receipt of uh, statistical indications for correct uh, feedback on the process. So with this we will wind up uh, the discussion on uh, in-process uh, gauging. Now we will move to the next topic that is uh, stage position uh, metrology. In the recent uh, times advanced manufacturing uh, systems are used to produce uh, very high precision uh, parts. Uh, when it comes to high precision uh, machine tools, accuracy of the positioning table or uh, positioning uh, stages is very very important so that precise components can be produced to micrometer or uh, nanometer uh, accuracy. Also there is a need for uh, accurate uh, positioning systems for probing uh, 
హై ప్రిసిషన్ కంపనెంట్స్ టు మైక్రోమీటర్ ఆర్ నానోమీటర్ యాక్యురసీ నౌ వాట్ ఆర్ మైక్రో పొజిషనింగ్ డివైజెస్ దే హ్యావ్ డ్రైవ్స్ అండ్ గైడింగ్ సిస్టమ్ సచ్ యాజ్ స్టెప్పర్ మోటార్స్ బాల్ స్క్రూస్ ఇనర్షియల్ డ్రైవ్స్ ఫ్రిక్షనల్ డ్రైవ్స్ బాల్ బేరింగ్స్ రోలర్ బేరింగ్స్ ఎక్సెట్రా దీస్ మైక్రో పొజిషనింగ్ డివైజెస్ హ్యావ్ మైక్రోమీటర్ రిజల్యూషన్ లైక్ పాయింట్ వన్ మైక్రోమీటర్ రిజల్యూషన్ హాఫ్ మైక్రోమీటర్ రిజల్యూషన్ వన్ మైక్రోమీటర్ రిజల్యూషన్ డిపెండింగ్ అపాన్ ద డిజైన్ అండ్ కన్స్ట్రక్షన్ ఆఫ్ ది డివైస్ ఇన్ దిస్ డయాగ్రామ్ యూ కెన్ సి ఏ మైక్రో పొజిషనింగ్ డివైస్ దిస్ ఇస్ బేసికలీ ఎక్స్ వై టేబుల్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ టూ మూమెంట్ in the x direction as well as y direction i can see this is the table on which work pieces can be mounted so we can directly place the work piece on the table or we can use some uh, suitable uh, fixture for mounting the work piece we can see the uh, wheels uh, two wheels for uh, moving uh, the x y uh, table in the x direction as well as y direction we can also observe uh, the cylindrical uh, guide you can see there is a guide here uh, there is another cylindrical guide and one more uh, cylindrical guide and one more cylindrical guide here so cylindrical guides and ball bearings also you can observe here uh, recirculating uh, ball bearings are used uh, so that it uh, precisely moves to micrometer uh, resolution now what are the nano positioning uh, device Uh, they have uh, uh, they are basically positioning devices capable of nanometer or sub nanometer uh, resolution a uh, drive system and guiding systems are uh, friction less and normally air bearings uh, linear motors and piezo drives are used in uh, nano positioning uh, stages so here we can see a nano commercially available nano positioning device wherein uh, uh, we have the table or the stage to keep the work piece so this will move by the nanometer uh, resolution so the range will be in terms of few uh, micrometer like uh, uh, 0 to 50 micrometer 0 to 100 uh, micrometer uh, ranges are available with uh, nanometer or sub nanometer uh, resolutions now this uh, picture uh, shows a motorized uh, precision uh, stage uh, we can observe uh, this is uh, x axis uh, motor with uh, x axis uh, high resolution rotary encoder and we have uh, y axis motor with uh, y axis uh, rotary encoder uh, where the motor is coupled to the lead screw you can observe the lead screw within that so when the motor uh, rotates the nut will move and hence the, the stage will uh, move along with uh, the work piece uh, that is mounted we can also see adjustable end limits on both sides we have end limits and here also you can observe uh, end limits for the y axis so encoders are provided for uh, feedback uh, purpose I mean these uh, pictures uh, we can see there is a digital uh, display as the table uh, moves the digital display will indicate what is the amount of uh, movement at any uh, location we can uh, set the reading to zero and from that uh, position when we move the table what is the amount of uh, table movement is indicated in this uh, digital display now here we can see a manual xyz table the z movement the vertical movement is by operating this knob and this is the table on which we have to keep the work pieces and then i can see the two micrometers are provided one for x and one for y so we can always uh, take the reading what is the movement of table uh, can be read by reading the main scale and uh, thimble of uh, these uh, micrometers 
and uh, the accuracy, positioning accuracy in uh, these cases will be uh, like uh, 1 micrometer, 2 micrometer depending upon uh, the micrometer units what we use. Now here uh, we can see the rotary tables, manual rotary tables and motorized uh, rotary tables. So you can see here this is uh, the a motorized uh, rotary table. This is the motor uh, fixed uh, to the body of the table. So inside there will be worm and uh, worm wheel mechanism to convert the rotary motion of the motor into the circular uh, motion of uh, the table. So this is uh, zero range is 0 to 360 degree and least count is uh, 1 degree with uh, vernier attachment. Uh, uh, a least count of uh, 10 seconds or 5 seconds uh, can be obtained. You can see the holes are provided to mount uh, the rotary tables on the machine tool uh, tables. So here we can see another uh, manually driven uh, rotary table. Uh, this is a uh, rotary table is mounted on uh, the machine tool table by using the T bolts. We can also see the vernier is attached so that uh, very precise uh, uh, rot rotary position can be obtained. So this is called uh, HV rotary table. Uh, H stands for horizontal and V stands for uh, vertical. So these tables can be used in horizontal or vertical position. Now we can observe that uh, this is uh, uh, placed in the vertical uh, position and uh, we can uh, tilt it and uh, we can use it uh, in the horizontal position also. This is the wheel uh, to obtain the rotary motion of the table and we can see the scale and uh, vernier. So uh, the tables are available with uh, 4 degree rotation uh, per handle rotation and 20 second uh, vernier scale uh, using vernier scale and accuracy, rot rotary accuracy of uh, 20 seconds uh, can be obtained and here we can see a tiltable uh, rotary table. So this is a table on which uh, we have to mount uh, the workpiece using the T boards. We can see the T slots and uh, this is the wheel to rotate the stage and uh, we can tilt this table by operating uh, this uh, lever. Again here we can see there is a uh, um, vernier scale so that a very precise uh, uh, tilted position can be obtained. Now what are the drives used for these uh, stages? Uh, these stages can be manually driven uh, stages or magnetostrictive uh, drives can be used thermodynamic uh, drives can be used, linear motors can be used to move the stages or uh, tables. Piezoelectric drives are also available for precise movement of uh, uh, micro nano movement of these uh, tables. Stepper motors also can be used. Also DC motors are used for, to drive the uh, stages. In this picture you can see a manually driven uh, XY uh, table. You can see micrometers are uh, attached. For, uh, by operating these uh, micrometers, we can get uh, the precise uh, motion of uh, table in uh, x and y directions. The uh, range of movement uh, in x and y will be like 25 mm by 25 mm, 50 by 50, 100 by 100. Like this, uh, different ranges are available. Uh, the resolution of these uh, manually driven uh, xy table will be normally 1 micrometer. And load capacity, that is uh, the workpiece weight, which can be mounted on the table will be like 1 kg, 2 kg, different sizes are available. Now uh, let us study the magnetostrictive drive used for micro displacement of uh, the, these tables. When the, you can see the arrangement here, this is the uh, unit of the machine or table of the machine which uh, which is uh, moved precisely and here uh, we have uh, this is the total uh, length of the unit 
and here we can see the uh, coil is provided uh, through which uh, the electromagnetic potential is applied and when we apply the electromagnetic uh, potential uh, the unit machine tool unit undergoes uh, a finite change in length that is delta m that uh, we can uh, see here in some cases this uh, change is positive that means uh, there will be extension of the unit of the machine and in some cases it, can, it will be negative that means this uh, unit machine tool unit contracts so that depends upon uh, the material characteristic delta lm is equal to lambda times l where lambda is the magnetostrictive uh, strain and L is uh, the length of the machine tool uh, unit. The value of lambda depends on the property of material and the actual number of ampere turns per centimeter uh, that is uh, H. Now here we can see uh, lambda H occurs for various uh, alloys. Lambda is uh, the magnetic restrictive strain and uh, h is uh, number of ampere turns per centimeter. So x axis indicates uh, the uh, h values in ampere turns per centimeter and y axis indicates uh, the value of uh, lambda. You can see the different uh, materials used for construction of uh, the um, machine tool uh, table. Now, uh, uh, the delta Lm can be calculated using the, this uh, relationship delta Lm is equal to lambda L this is equal to so if we take uh, 60 ampere turns per centimeter for uh, per alloy then uh, the lambda value will be 40 units so that is 40 lambda value is 40 times 10 power uh, minus 6 and let us assume the value of uh, L of the machine tool uh, as 100 millimeter then uh, the delta Lm will be equal to 0 0.004 0 millimeter that means uh, 4 uh, micrometer like this by adjusting the value of uh, uh, h we can uh, get uh, the required uh, positioning uh, accuracy Now these diagrams uh, show the application of uh, magnetic magnetostrictive device for giving the finer uh, displacement. This is the machine tool table which is to be positioned uh, precisely. So you can see the arrangement. This is the motor for table uh, feed. We have clutch and gearing arrangement and then lead screw with nut. A rough displacement uh, can be given by using the lead screw or nut and finer movement can be uh, given by the magnetostrictive uh, drive and in, in this diagram you can see the uh, rough displacement being provided by the hydraulic uh, cylinder and finer displacement of the unit is provided by using the magnetostrictive uh, drive. Now uh, let us study another uh, type of drive used in uh, uh, machine tool uh, tables. Now this is a thermodynamic uh, drive used for very precise movement of uh, machine tool uh, stages also known as uh, machine tool uh, tables. Now the arrangement uh, is like this, uh, this is the body of uh, the machine tool and this is the support uh, B and uh, this is uh, the machine tool uh, stage which will uh, move on the guideline and X is the movement. Uh, that is uh, needed and uh, inside the support B we have uh, electric uh, coil and uh, current will be passed uh, through this coil and this coil gets heated up and hence the support B will also uh, 
uh, be heated and uh, it expands. The support B has uh, electric coil inside. Depending upon the temperature attained by the support B, which depends upon uh, the current that is passed, uh, it undergoes a change in length delta x. We can see here this uh, table uh, moves to this position depending upon the temperature that is attained by this uh, support B. Uh, because of uh, the expansion of support B, the machine tool will move uh, by a micro displacement uh, delta x. So, delta x can be calculated by alpha times L times uh, delta t, where alpha is coefficient of linear expansion, which depends upon the support uh, material. L is the length of the support B. So, L is equal to length of uh, the support uh, B and delta T is change in the temperature. Now, you can see some of the displacement characteristic uh, for a particular uh, material based on various feed velocities. You can see x axis is the time of heating in seconds, elongation in, in terms of millimeter. So, the temperature uh, varies between 300 to 400 degree Celsius and various curves are available uh, for different uh, feed velocities. Now, uh, if you take uh, very slow heating as shown by curve 1, uh, for if we heat for about uh, 60 seconds, that is 1 minute, then uh, the elongation of uh, the support uh, material uh, will be about uh, 0.2 uh, millimeter. Like this, by adjusting uh, the uh, heating uh, time, uh, different uh, displacements uh, can be achieved. Now, uh, let us uh, study another uh, kind of uh, drive used uh, in uh, precision x ray tables. So, the linear uh, motors can be used to try the precision tables. A linear uh, motor is uh, effectively an AC induction uh, motor that is cut open and uh, unwrapped. In this uh, diagram, you can see the conventional uh, rotary AC induction motor. This is the uh, stator uh, coil and the rotor. So, when the stator is energized, the rotor uh, starts to rotate. In the linear uh, uh, motor, the stator is uh, laid out in the form of uh, a track of uh, flat coils as shown here. You can see the stator in the unwrapped uh, form. This uh, stator is also known as uh, primary of uh, the linear motor. The rotor takes uh, the form of a moving uh, platform known as uh, secondary. So, this is uh, the rotor portion which is known as secondary and it is also known as uh, forcer, forcer uh, plate which will move uh, linearly. When the current is uh, switched on, the secondary that is uh, the uh, rotor slides past the primary supported and propelled by a magnetic uh, field. Now, let us uh, study how uh, the linear uh, motor uh, works. So, in this uh, diagram, you can see the stator, which is in the uh, form of a flat uh, portion and then we have a rotor placed above the, uh, for above the stator. So, this uh, rotor is supported by mechanical bearings or uh, air bearings. So, when uh, we pass the current to the stator, a magnetic uh, field is uh, induced. Because of this, uh, secondary magnetic uh, field is induced in the rotor. Now, these two magnetic fields uh, interact or they react 
between uh, each other and this produces uh, a linear thrust on the rotor and hence uh, the rotor starts to move. Since uh, the magnetic field in the stator is uh, traveling along with that the rotor also starts to move and hence we get uh, the linear motion of uh, the rotor. Now uh, the linear motors also known as uh, linear uh, induction motor they are designed to directly produce uh, motion in a straight line. Typically linear induction motors have a finite uh, stator uh, length that means depending upon the application we have to design the, the state or in this picture you can see the uh, tubular type of uh, linear uh, motor the red uh, colored uh, parts are uh, linear uh, motors and these are uh, thrust uh, rods and uh, this is the work uh, stage on which uh, we have to place uh, the work piece. Now, uh, ultra high accuracy linear uh, motor positioning stages are available in the uh, market. Uh, the typical uh, positioning uh, range is uh, 50 to 300 uh, millimeter and they are able to carry a load of uh, 15 kg. The maximum velocity is uh, 600 uh, millimeter per uh, second. Positioning resolution is uh, uh, point not not one uh, micrometer and they have a position reproducibility of 0 0.015 micrometers unidirectional and plus or minus 0 0.025 micrometers bidirectional. Center mounted uh, linear position uh, feedback encoders are uh, provided for feedback. Specifically these are designed for uh, subsurface wafer inspection fiber alignment and high precision uh, robotics. Now uh, let us discuss another uh, type of drive used in uh, positioners that is the uh, piezoelectric uh, effect. Now you can see in the diagrams we have a solid uh, mass to which uh, electrical current or voltage is uh, applied. In the first case uh, the electrical current applied is uh, zero and uh, here we can observe that when electrical voltage is applied there is deformation of the solid uh, material. So this effect is known as piezoelectric uh, effect. Uh, this effect uh, describes the relation between uh, a mechanical uh, stress and uh, an electrical voltage in solids. An applied mechanical stress will generate uh, a voltage and when we apply voltage, uh, the voltage will change the shape of uh, the solid by a small uh, amount uh, which we can observe here. The most well known piezoelectric material is uh, quartz material. Now this uh, piezoelectric effect is used uh, to prepare uh, piezoelectric uh, actuators which are used for uh, micro positioning and uh, nano positioning application. Uh, in this uh, we can see uh, a piezoelectric uh, actuator made out of uh, flexural uh, mechanism. The advantage of this uh, flexural mechanism is it does not require uh, uh, any lubrication, there is no uh, wear and tear of uh, the parts. Now uh, it is almost uh, made out of a single uh, uh, material and uh, inside we have uh, the piezoelectric uh, material uh, to which we have to apply the voltage and there is a deformation of uh, the piezo material with the result that uh, these uh, surfaces uh, will uh, move in the perpendicular uh, direction as shown uh, here. So the vertical movement 
uh, is proportional to the applied uh, voltage. So these, uh, this flexural mechanism provides uh, an exceptionally large uh, range of uh, motion, something like 200 micrometer, 300 micrometer uh, range and uh, the response is very fast and uh, uh, the sub nanometer resolution is uh, possible. So such uh, piezoelectric actuators are uh, used for nano positioning, biomedical application, microscopy, precision machining, vibration control and they are also used in high speed valves and uh, optical uh, engineering. Now some uh, uh, specifications uh, we can uh, see here, you can see the dimension of uh, the piezoelectric actuators, very small actuators uh, are possible. You can see the total length is uh, 20 millimeter and height is 7 millimeter and uh, the width is 6 millimeter. Such a uh, miniature uh, actuators uh, are uh, available. The voltage uh, that is applied it varies from minus 15 volts to uh, plus 115 volts. So this displacement range that is vertical movement displacement range is from uh, 0 to 120 micrometer. So depending upon the applied voltage, uh, we can uh, have uh, the displacement in terms of uh, nanometers. And we can say another uh, piezoelectric actuator of uh, bigger size, total length is 52 millimeter, width is 16 millimeter and height is uh, 14 millimeter. And the displacement range is up to 830 micrometer. And you can see it can uh, a force that can be applied using uh, such a piezoelectric uh, actuator is uh, 90 newtons. Now you can see a uh, piezo assisted uh, micrometer in this uh, picture. Uh, this is a manual uh, micrometer, manually operated. And uh, there is a piezo mass mounted in series with uh, the screw. So inside there will be a micrometer screw to which a piezo mass is uh, uh, fixed in series. You can see this is uh, the conventional uh, micrometer wherein uh, we can give uh, the larger uh, displacement and the finer displacements are given by the piezo mass. You can see the thimble here, uh, graduated, uh, okay, you can see the The, the thimble has uh, clearly marked graduations uh, every uh, 5 micrometer while the barrel is uh, engraved uh, with uh, marks for every 1 millimeter. It is equipped with uh, a strain gauge to give the positional uh, feedback over uh, a range of uh, 0 to 30 micrometer of uh, piezo travel with uh, 10 nanometer uh, resolution. So here you can see the micrometer, manual micrometer travel range is uh, 12, up to 12.7 millimeter and micrometer resolution is uh, 1 micrometer whereas the piezo mass uh, travel range is uh, 30 micrometer up to 30 micrometer and uh, the piezo resolution is uh, 10 uh, nanometer. So piezo driving voltage is up to 75 uh, volts. Now in this uh, picture we can see a high load precision piezo nano positioning uh, jet stage. That means we can get uh, a vertical uh, uh, movement in the jet direction. So nano positioning is possible in the vertical uh, direction. So it has an encoder for feedback with a resolution of uh, 3 nanometer and minimum incremental motion is uh, 100 nanometer and the total travel range is up to 
12.5 millimeter in the vertical direction and it can carry a load of up to 12 kg hence it is a high load precision nanoversion jet stage. Now what are the various advantages of piezoelectrical systems? So we can get a very fine uh, resolution of sub, sub nanometer uh, range. So with this uh, extremely fine uh, positioning is uh, possible. The workpieces can be moved to very fine uh, uh, accurate uh, positions and uh, these piezoelectric uh, actuators are able to produce uh, large uh, force uh, generation. Uh, they can generate a force of up to 10,000 uh, newtons and uh, piezoelectric systems or stages uh, are available which can bear loads up to several uh, tons and position within a range of more than uh, 100 uh, micrometer that is uh, range travel range is up to 100 micrometer with uh, sub nanometer uh, resolution. These piezoelectric uh, actuators offer the fastest response time that means positioning can be achieved within a fraction of microseconds and then they settle typically in milliseconds minimal tilt and out of plane motion and zero wear components is the added advantage of piezoelectric actuators and the power consumption is very very low the piezo effect directly converts the electrical energy into motion only absorbing electrical energy during the movement otherwise there is no absorption of electrical energy and in static operation even holding heavy loads uh, does not consume uh, power only during motion the power is uh, consumed and uh, no wear and uh, tear there are no gears and no rotating parts and then operation uh, at cryogenic uh, temperatures is possible. The piezoelectric effect is based on uh, electrical fields and uh, they can function down to almost 0 Kelvin. And uh, the capacitive feedback is possible which is uh, direct uh, measuring type and non-contact uh, type. A vacuum and uh, clean room uh, compatibility is there with these uh, piezo actuators and piezo actuators uh, they are uh, ceramic elements that uh, do not need any lubricants and there is no problem of uh, wear and uh, abrasion so this uh, makes them uh, clean room uh, compatible and ideally they are suited for the ultra high vacuum uh, applications and their uh, reliability is very very high and they can be used in uh, industrial and space applications where uh, the uh, cycle of operation is uh, as high as uh, 100 billion cycles and they perform uh, frictionlessly because of the flexor uh, designs uh, the, there is better uh, multi-axis trajectory control and parallel uh, metrology which keeps uh, motion of all controlled axes inside uh, the servo loop and digital control is possible with uh, wider dynamic range and uh, better uh, linearity and auto calibration facility is also available with uh, these piezo actuators. Now let us discuss about uh, the stepper motor which are used in uh, positioning uh, stages. We can see the main parts of uh, the stepper uh, motor this is the stator part which is having uh, the field windings and uh, these field windings are uh, energized by supplying the electrical uh, pulses and when the electrical pulses are uh, given to these uh, uh, windings the uh, rotor of uh, the motor is uh, attracted and hence it starts to rotate. The shaft of uh, the motor rotates in uh, discrete uh, step increments uh, when the electrical command pulses are uh, applied to the stator in a proper uh, sequence. So when uh, 
the more higher RPM uh, is uh, required, we have to apply, we have to increase the uh, electrical uh, pulse rate and when very slow speed uh, is needed, we have to decrease the pulse uh, rate applied to the stator. Like this, we can control uh, the speed of uh, the motor and we can also control the rotation angle by controlling uh, the applied uh, electrical pulses. Now you can see the working of uh, the rotary stepper uh, motor at uh, position uh, 1, this is the position uh, 1, the rotor is beginning at uh, the upper uh, electromagnet, this is the upper electromagnet, this is the uh, wherein uh, we, are, we are supplied uh, the voltage and this uh, becomes uh, the electromagnet and it attracts the rotor. So, rotor is in line with this particular uh, upper electromagnet. Now, uh, say we want to move the rotor uh, in the clockwise direction, uh, that means we want to rotate the rotor in the clockwise uh, direction. So, what we have to do is, we have to turn off uh, the voltage supply to this uh, upper electromagnet and we have to switch on the electrical supply to this uh, uh, right side uh, uh, pole. So, this becomes electromagnet and it attracts the uh, rotor and now you can see the rotor has turned through 90 degrees uh, and then it gets aligned, rotor gets aligned with this particular uh, electromagnet. Like this, the motor steps a bit at a time, in this case 90 degree uh, per uh, pulse. So, if you want uh, uh, very minute uh, rotation, then we have to increase the number of uh, poles. So, here we have uh, shown a very limited number of poles. By increasing the number of poles, this rotation angle per step uh, can be reduced. Like that, we can have uh, uh, 1 degree rotation, half degree rotation. So, fraction of an angle uh, rotation is also possible by proper designing of the motor. Now, this uh, process is uh, repeated in the same manner at uh, south and uh, west uh, electromagnets. Now, we can see in the position number uh, 3, so the power supply, electric voltage supply to this is uh, switched off and uh, the power voltage supply to this south uh, pole is uh, on. So, this becomes electromagnet and it attracts the rotor. Now, we can see uh, the rotor has uh, uh, further rotated and uh, it has become aligned with this south uh, electromagnet and in the fourth position you can see the voltage supply to this south uh, pole has uh, switched off and we have uh, uh, west uh, electromagnet is in action. So, the rotor has further rotated in this uh, direction. Like this uh, we can uh, continue, we can uh, uh, rotate the electromagnetic uh, field uh, by using uh, a microcontroller and hence we can have uh, continuous rotation of uh, the rotor at uh, required uh, RPM and we can stop the rotor at any desired uh, angle depending upon uh, the positioning uh, requirement. Now, uh, in this picture we can uh, see XY table, this is the table uh, surface on which we have to mount the workpiece which is to be positioned and we have one uh, rotary stepper motor for X axis and uh, one more uh, stepper motor for uh, Y axis. So, you can see another arrangement here, this is uh, uh, XY table and the uh, X uh, direction movement and in the Y direction uh, movement. So, we have uh, one uh, stepper motor for X moment and one uh, stepper motor for uh, Y moment. And we can also see the uh, T slots for mounting uh, the workpiece on the table. So, here we can see the stepper motor is coupled with the ball uh, screw. So, there is a coupling over here and it is properly coupled. So, when the stepper motor rotates, uh, the rotation of the stepper motor is converted into linear uh, uh, 
uh, motion of the table by having uh, this ball screw and the nut uh, mechanism. Now uh, some specification, typical uh, specifications uh, we can uh, uh, see in this uh, table. The travel of uh, 50 millimeter by 50 millimeter, uh, any desired uh, travel uh, amount can be obtained by proper design. Bidirectional repeatability of such a uh, such an arrangement is plus or minus uh, one uh, micrometer. Flatness and straightness movement of table uh, is uh, five uh, micrometer. And orthogonality movement orthogonality is uh, about twenty arc uh, seconds. And the tables. Uh, uh, can be designed to uh, carry a load of uh, 75 uh, kg and the maximum uh, velocity that is uh, uh, possible is 50 rps 50 revolutions per second is uh, possible we can always uh, integrate uh, the encoders for uh, feedback arrangement with uh, a required uh, a resolution like one uh, micrometer, 0.1 micrometer resolution, 0 0.01 micrometer resolution, 0 0.001 uh, micrometer uh, resolution. Depending upon the positioning uh, accuracy required, we can uh, uh, select appropriate uh, encoders and appropriate uh, uh, lead on the ball screw. Now we can see some uh, uh, specifications here the xy table with uh, stepper motors are available with uh, different uh, stroke lengths so 100 millimeter stroke 200 millimeter up to 800 millimeter even more than that is also possible and here we can see the repeatability of uh, plus or uh, minus uh, 2 micrometer can be achieved uh, with a positioning accuracy of uh, 30 micrometer 40 micrometer 50 micrometer so by having a proper design, even the positioning accuracy of uh, a 1 micron, 2 micron is also possible. And here you can see the maximum speed. So when the ball lead screw is having uh, a lead of 5 millimeter, uh, then uh, a speed of 250 millimeter per second is possible with 10 mm lead. So you can see here we have ball screw of uh, 10 mm lead uh, with 10 mm uh, lead uh, ball screw. A speed of 500 uh, millimeter uh, per second uh, is also possible. Now, what are the advantages of uh, stepper uh, motor? By controlling the rate of input uh, pulse, we can uh, control the rotation uh, angle and we can position the rotor of the motor at any desired uh, angle. The motor has uh, full uh, torque even at uh, stand. Uh, still uh, when the windings are uh, energized. So precise positioning and uh, repeatability of movement is uh, possible uh, since uh, the stepper motors have uh, an accuracy of uh, 3 to 5 percent of a step and this error is uh, non-cumulative from uh, one step to the next uh, step. Excellent uh, response to starting and stopping and uh, reversing is possible. Uh, in terms of uh, milliseconds. Now very uh, reliable, these stepper motors are very much reliable since uh, there are no contact brushes, no gearbox. Uh, so the life of the motor is purely dependent on the life of the bearing what we use. The motor uh, response, motor's response to digital uh, input pulses, hence uh, open loop control is possible. Uh, making the motor uh, very simple and uh, less costly to control and it is possible to achieve a very low speed uh, synchronous uh, rotas rotation with uh, a load uh, that is directly coupled to the shaft. By adjusting the pulse rate, we can have a very slow speed of uh, rotation. A wide range of uh, rotational speeds uh, can be uh, obtained as uh, the speed is proportional to the frequency of uh, input pulses. By adjusting the frequency of input pulses, uh, we can have very low speeds, we can have very high, very high speeds also. So these uh, stepper motors have uh, many applications uh, in XY recorders, CNC machines, scientific instrumentation for positioning of the workpieces and they are also used in uh, robotics. 
for proper positioning of the work pieces. Now let us start another uh, type of uh, drive system used in uh, precision uh, stages. Now the, in the picture we can uh, see the linear uh, stepper uh, motor, its uh, constructional features we can uh, see here. We have a platen having uh, teeth cut on its uh, top surface and then we have a forcer uh, unit uh, with uh, two phases of uh, electromagnets phase A and uh, phase B. In between we have a permanent uh, magnet. We can see here rotary stepper motor the stator is having uh, so this is the stator uh, which is having the field uh, windings whereas uh, here the forcer unit which moves has uh, the field windings and they become uh, electromagnets whereas uh, the stator the platen is the stator and which is not having any electro uh, any field uh, windings uh, basically the linear uh, stepper uh, motor is uh, a rotary stepper motor unwrapped to operate in a straight line uh, they operate on uh, electromagnetic uh, principle and uh, they consist of uh, a moving uh, forcer and uh, a stationary platen. So the stationary platen is uh, fixed to the uh, precision uh, stages and forcer will be moving and uh, the workpiece uh, table will be mounted on uh, the forcer unit. The platen is a passive toothed steel bar that means it doesn't have any windings and ex it extends over the desired length of the travel. A forcer incorporates electromagnetic uh, modules that means uh, phase A and phase B electromagnetic modules it has and uh, uh, it uh, runs along the length of the stator, uh, stator by the forcer unit uh, moves along uh, the stator and it is supported by uh, bearings and uh, it can move in uh, both the directions. Now in this uh, picture you can see a forcer uh, unit. So here there will be electromagnetic uh, modules uh, will be there and uh, we can see the bearings, bearings on uh, the side as well as the bottom uh, portion. A linear stepper motor has uh, either mechanical uh, roller uh, bearings similar to this or uh, air bearings uh, also are used in uh, linear stepper motor. Side and uh, bottom mechanical bearings are built into the forcer. They are fixed to the forcer and uh, they doesn't uh, require any adjustments over the lifetime of the motor. They are permanently lubricated and exhibit uh, very little uh, amount of uh, friction and uh, you can see here in if uh, air bearings are used uh, you can see there is a small uh, gap air gap between uh, the forcer unit and uh, the platen and uh, the forcer unit at the bottom of the forcer unit there will be orifices so through this orifice uh, compressed uh, air is uh, allowed and uh, uh, because of uh, the air pressure the platen or the, or the forcer it will uh, uh, float and then it will uh, move in the linear uh, direction. Air bearing motors can operate uh, continuously at high speed uh, without any wear because there is since there is no contact metal to metal contact there is no wear of uh, parts. Air bearing permits a smaller air gap uh, resulting in uh, larger uh, motor forces. Now linear uh, motor uh, linear stepper motors are uh, micro stepped by proportioning uh, currents into two phases in the in this picture we observe that two phases are there phase a and phase b so like this by proportioning the current micro stepping uh, can be achieved uh, to have higher uh, 
resolution. With uh, micro stepper linear stepper motors, uh, following benefits uh, can be achieved higher uh, resolution for uh, very high precision positioning and uh, very it runs smoothly at uh, slow speeds and then wider uh, speed range can be obtained. Here we can uh, understand uh, the micro stepping when uh, uh, one phase of the forcer, uh, when one coil is uh, powered, I can see here there is a attraction between the two teeth surfaces and here there is a, a repulsion with the result that the forcer will move by one uh, step. This is known as uh, full uh, stepping and uh, when both the coil 1 and coil 2 are powered at a time together then you can uh, see here at uh, A there is a pulling force and at B also there is a pulling uh, force because of this the forcer uh, will move by off uh, step this is known as uh, off uh, stepping so this process is known as uh, micro stepping by micro stepping the very high resolutions uh, can be obtained now uh, we can see here the complete arrangement of uh, open loop uh, single axis stepping uh, motor this is the linear uh, stepper motor and you can see air bearings uh, are provided in this so air uh, at a pressure of uh, 3 bar is uh, supplied uh, so that uh, air bearings can be operated and here this is uh, an open loop uh, control there is no feedback of uh, position of the forcer Whereas in this case, this is a closed loop uh, control of single axis stepper motor. Again, this is a uh, air being operated and you can see uh, encoder uh, are provided for uh, uh, feedback of uh, the position of forcer. And this is a open loop planar axis stepping motor. That means dual axis uh, stepper motor which can uh, move in uh, x uh, direction as well as uh, in the uh, y direction. Now you can see some uh, uh, performance details of uh, commercially available uh, linear uh, stepper uh, motor. Uh, maximum thrust on the force uh, it can be uh, 60 newtons or 80 newtons depending upon the uh, um, model what we use and uh, the holding force will be 70 newtons and 100 uh, uh, newtons force. The resolution per step you can see as low as uh, 1 micron uh, resolution can be obtained and repeatability of uh, 2 microns, micrometers are possible and the positioning accuracy of plus or minus uh, uh, 5 micron is possible uh, with uh, these type of uh, stepper uh, motors and uh, uh, velocity of 1.5 meters per second can be achieved. Now with this uh, we will uh, conclude module 12 lecture 5. In this uh, lecture we uh, discussed about uh, the uh, inline probing and uh, benefits of uh, in process uh, gauging and then uh, we discussed about uh, the basics of uh, stage position metrology and uh, motorized linear and uh, rotary stages and then we had different kinds of drives used for uh, moving uh, the stages. With this, uh, we will uh, conclude. Thank you.